Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. I'm going to say it again. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Ladies and gentlemen, when that phrase was first written down, it was by a man at his wit's end who had lost everything that ever meant anything to him. His loss, his vacuum, his emptiness, his pain was so complete that it is impossible to put into English language how he felt. He was convinced that God was through with him, that he had crossed the line. When he said, creating me a clean heart, he was desperate, thinking God would never hear him. David had sent for Bathsheba, and he had sinned. Then he arranged for her husband to be murdered. This man that wrote the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, had become the enemy of God. He'd become every vile thing that he thought he had the moral high ground over his predecessor, King Saul. He said to himself, I'm not like Saul. I'm not killing the priests. But in one moment, evil and the undertow of evil had taken him over. Creating me a clean heart. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. I'm going to talk to you about having a clean heart. I'm going to tell you that the most disastrous thing that has happened to America is that we don't understand our pain. We don't know why the problems of our children, the spirit of suicide, perversion, loneliness, and isolation are so great in America. You see, we have the desire to have a clean heart. It's in you, whether you believe it or not. No matter all the layers you try to put over it, there is something in you that says, I wish I was forgiven of all my sin. I wish that I had a clean heart. So David said these words, creating me a clean heart, O God, filled with clean thoughts and right desires. Don't toss me aside, banish forever from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me again the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. David had so lied to himself that a prophet could give him a parable, a parable where he is the villain in the story and not even know it. There was a man who had a thousand sheep and he had a neighbor that only had one. And that sheep of that one man in that his neighbor was like a pet, raised it as a member of the family. And that man with a thousand sheep went over and stole the lamb, killed the lamb. And Nathan said to David, what do you think should be done now? He said, whoever that man is should be brutally punished. And the man of God looked at David and said, you are the man. Now I'm going to talk to you about the fact that the four most prosperous states in America also have the highest suicide rate. The woke culture is not working. It is not working. It is a brutal failure. And I want you to understand that it became fashionable in America to bash sermons against sin. Oh, and you look intellectual when you do that. You look fashionable when you bash a preacher who gets that old book out and preaches the old verse. 
that teaches that sin has torment. But you know what? You in your life have proven the Bible to be right. Because the Bible said America would be miserable. Any nation would be miserable. Any nation that rejected God would be miserable. And how is it that we laugh that we've rejected God? And like David, can't see ourselves in the mirror, in the parable that's about us. America is an example of a nation blessed with so much and has turned her back on all of it. And you know what it did? It put blood in the streets. It put violence in our cities. It made our children to be the most victimized group of children America has ever seen. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. You want a clean heart. You just don't know it. You don't realize how deep it goes. Borrowing from the story of David in the movie Godfather 3, there is a moment when Michael Corleone is portrayed as having visited the Pope. And the Pope said to him, let's go over here in his garden. This is where my priests confess to me and make their confession." And then he sat there and he said, but if I'm not willing to repent, what is the point of me confessing? And the, and the character who played the Pope said these words, the need to confess can be overwhelming. And when it's there, you must seize the moment. I'm a man of God. And I'm telling you, some of you have left your wife. Some of you have killed your own children. Some of you have done things and the woke culture is giving you layers and layers of protection. And you think that that's good, that you don't feel bad, that you're antidepressant, that your lifestyle, that your excuses, that the songs you sing, the things you text, and your TikTok videos will assage and salve your conscience. But you are paying the price. You pay it in the last moment before you go to bed. You pay it in the first moment when you wake up. Life has no meaning, no flavor. Relationships are empty. And there is a despair. Never have Americans been so afraid of the future. So the Pope says to Michael Corleone, the need to confess can be overwhelming. The need for a clean heart. I asked the, the Gary Chapman and the friends to sing that old hymn about the blood of Christ, about a fountain filled with blood. And I'm going to talk to you right now about the church of Oprah, about the new age, about the dream catchers, about everything. Let me tell you something. They can put all kinds of remedies and layers and band-aids and numb you, but you will never have peace, never. Never will you lay your body down to sleep with peace until you surrender to Christ. Until you surrender to Christ, there can be no peace.